In this video, we explore weather patterns. This exploration is based on the website Strategies for Deploying Virtual Representations of the Built Environment. Links to the website and related sections are included below. Simulation suites invariably include sets of weather data so that buildings can be tested against appropriate boundary conditions. Often there are facilities to introduce additional weather data sets from repositories or from locally monitored data. What patterns of temperature, radiation, wind provide suitable clues as to how a building might perform? Are we interested in future-proofing our designs? Are we seeking to identify scenarios that might stress a building? Do we have an established building design that we want to test uh, against a different region. For these and many other reasons, we ought to be able to quickly and reliably explore weather patterns and apply what we discover within a simulation. The SPR has a module called CLIM, which both manages weather files and supports the exploration of weather patterns. Let's start by getting an idea of the extent of weather data that comes embedded with the SPR suite. In a Linux uh, terminal session, let's uh, have a look and see what's available. We'll often find uh, that the SPR has been installed in the slash opt folder. So, And in there, we find that there is a climate folder. And we can see there are quite a few weather files located there. But users will rarely need to go into this particular folder because um, ESPR provides a, a mechanism for selecting that. So let's go back to our training folder and invoke the project manager. And if I go into databases, weather, I can see there are a number of options available. You can select from a file that might be in the model or select from a, a list, select another. So. These are the known weather files associated with this particular distribution of ESPR. We can scroll through there and say that we want to uh, look at, let's pick uh, Birmingham data from 1995 in the UK. And when we select that, we see there's some information that's uh, reported in the text area of the interface. For example, the source location, minimum and maximum temperatures each month of year. We can also see that there are some definitions of seasons and typicals. So the spring season for this particular climate set goes from the 6th of March to the 14th of May and a typical spring week begins Monday, the 3rd of April. So the typical spring week has been predetermined by an analysis of the weather data uh, to find the most typical one. So if we ran an assessment for the entire spring season, we would test the building with periods which represent both a transition from the winter 
as well as the transition into summer. But if we were looking for a quick indication of likely performance, we might choose to select the typical week. Of course, users who are tasked with maintaining these files are introducing new weather data sets and defining appropriate seasons and typical periods. We'll use facilities that will be covered in other videos. Selected Birmingham. And the climate analysis module starts up. It's been passed the name of the weather data set, and its job is to load that. So we are shown a number of options here. Let's have a look at the graphic views into this weather period. For example, the dry bulb temperature over the entire year uh, gives us a graph like this. On a weekly basis, we can see general patterns. However, um, we may often want to delve into a shorter period of time. For example, we could go and pick January. and look at those periods. And now we have a lot more detail in, in, available to us. We can see there's a very brief period down here, um, approaching minus five degrees. And there are a few times where during this period we get up around 11 degrees. What else is going on? Ah, well, let's add to it uh, diffuse horizontal radiation. So now we get a second axis being drawn here. Okay, what about direct normal? And draw the graph. Okay, so we can see there are a few days where we have around 500 to 600 watts per square meter. And then there are some days where uh, essentially we have very little direct radiation. Now, are there any similarities and patterns um, that we might notice? Days that have high direct solar radiation will tend to have clear skies and days that are are mostly diffuse radiation will tend to be cloudy days. So weather data doesn't report cloudiness per se, but we can infer it from looking at this graph. What else do we notice? Well, the cold period is uh, associated with direct normal solar radiation and clear skies. Here's another probable clear sky period followed by a cold period. Uh, we drop several degrees of temperature in this uh, clear period. Um, however, this one, the uh, high solar radiation is associated with an increase in temperature. And here we have a fall and a rise. So the relationship sometimes is a little bit complicated, and therefore we might want to do further um, tests. But if we were looking for a, um, a period that includes some cold as well as warm periods, uh, these first few days of January would cover quite a range of temperatures. So, uh, well, graphics is one way of looking at things. Sometimes other metrics will provide useful indicators of the severity of weather. And these can be found in the synoptic menu. So if I go into synoptic, again, we've got our selection of periods. Uh, we've got which weather data am I interested in? And then what kind of reporting would I like to look at? 
maximum, minimum, days within a particular range, degree days or hours, average values, frequency histogram. Let's think in terms of these degree days or hours. This is a metric which dates back many decades. But essentially, it sums up the difference for each hour over the period, what, how many degrees of difference between some base heating and cooling temperature and the ambient temperature outside. The bigger the magnitude of the degree day number that's reported, the more extreme the weather. So uh, we are looking at the period of January. So if we choose dry bulb temperature and then de degree days or hours, we then have a choice. Daily degree days, weekly degree days, monthly, or seasonal. Let's look at weekly degree days. Now, the concept of degree days has a base temperature and also a cooling base temperature. And then we can see um, here's weeks in January heating degree days, average for each day of that week, and then a total degree days over the week. Now, there are no cooling degree days. So the average over that whole period was 12.41, and over the period, 384. If we set the period to uh, the whole year and said degree dry bulb temperature, degree days, and monthly reporting with those base temperatures. Here's our monthly averages and totals. And we can see how those evolve over the year. Now 2,776 heating degree days over the entire year is a measure of its severity. And we can see in that measure of severity that there is little difference between January and February. Uh, March is not much less severe. April, we're starting to notice a change. May, and then June, July, and August, th these numbers are very small. So one way we could look at that is that um, there is a fairly long spring. We can see similar numbers are happening in the autumn in October, November, and December. Another way of looking at it is frequency histograms. So. Let's go back to, uh, let's look at the months of January and February. So from the first day of the first month to the 28th day of the second month, dry bulb temperature and frequency histogram. It's going to ask us some questions. Let's just Go with the defaults. Fixed width is, in essence, one degree. Use default bins. So, so there's a frequency over the two months. Okay. The it spends the most time at roughly three degrees. Very little time. Um, at 13, and although, yes, there was that, that minimum around minus 6 or so, um, there are very few occasions under about minus 4 degrees. And if we want to know the numbers a little bit better, well, we can use Ask for Summaries table, and we'll see that there are very few 
uh, occurrences. So the number of hits or the frequency and percentage. These are relatively these are very small numbers. We don't we've less than a percent in each of those bins until we get to about six degrees. And again, um, we've only got a, about a percent of the time or less above about 12 degrees. So the idea is there are many different ways of looking at things uh, in terms of different kinds of reporting. And the more you explore, the more you'll find something that will give you some useful feedback to help you decide. Now, we will want to notice here that um, the physical location of that is 52.45 degrees north and 1.73 degrees west. We should keep a note of that because we want potentially to assign that location within any model that we make that is using this weather data. So that's a quick tour of the climate module. We will go and focus on more specific tasks in other videos.